guys. I just want to say thank you for joining me for the uh, Scion's Descent uh, book club. Um, don't be afraid to just say whatever you have to say about the book. I just wanted this to be like an open roundtable discussion. Um, and then in the future, we're going to have other authors like the amazing Annabelle. She's going to come on and talk about Eden Project and um, all the books that she has to come. So uh, I am author S.D. Johnson, a.k.a. Simone. Uh, I wrote The Scion's Descent. Um, it's a trilogy. So the second book is Carn or what's the second book called? Confessions of the Elect. <laughs> and then the third book is going to be entitled Carnage for Truth. So uh, next introduction. Who wants to go? Hey, I'm Chavis Johnson, um, husband to the amazing Simone Johnson. So uh, I do a lot of community work, working at a community hospital, helping violently injured patients, love ministry, just overall, just love community. So that's me. Yes. Annabelle, your turn. Okay. Hello, I'm Annabelle. I'm from London. So <laughs> I'm actually a writer too. I'm currently, so I've finished writing, I've published the Eden Project, which is my first debut book. And I'm currently writing or editing my second book at the moment. So hopefully that will be out soon, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, it's amazing. Just the little start she allowed me to read the book is amazing already. So thank you. All right. Okay. My name is Ed Williams. I am a new fan. I follow Above the Read podcasts. And that's where um, I found out about this book, an amazing author. And so I just immediately ordered it and I've read one and two and I'm, I'm hooked. I'm just a new fan. And, Thank you. I appreciate it. And I love, I love these books. Thank you. I will say, please don't buy the three because <laughs> after I told you I was going to send some books, you wouldn't buy them anyway. So I greatly appreciate that. But yeah, I have uh, copies coming for you guys. Um, you. Yeah, so overall opinions of the book we can kind of jump into that and then get into like some of the precise things or maybe themes that you saw in the book ask any questions i'm here for the discussion let's go well for me i like i'm not a big um reader so whenever yeah you know of course unfortunately you know i'm the, I'm the black sheep of the family uh, but, you know, I, I'm not a big reader, but so what keeps me interested is um, action and description. And I think both of those were encapsulated in this story. Um, like just when you put me in a scene, like I can actually see the way you write it. Um, I can vision the characters. I can vision, you know, the atmosphere of wherever I'm at. Um, and it's just it's really exciting to kind of see that. Like in my head, it's like I start seeing a movie. Like this needs to be a movie or even like a video game. Like, man, they should make this into a video game. And, you know, and I'm thinking about all kinds of stuff. Like, you know, obviously this is post-apocalyptic. So I'm thinking like, you know, people used to play Dungeons and Dragons. They probably still do. I don't know. But when I was younger, people play like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. What if it was a board game like this and you had all the characters with special cards and like, I'm just, my mind just starts going just because of the descriptiveness that you put in there and stuff. So. Uh, that was good. Of course, I fell in love with one of the characters, and we'll probably talk about that a little later, you know. But uh, yeah, so that's my thoughts. All right. And I actually wanted to ask you a question regarding the book. I love the book; it's amazing. I agree with your husband. Like everything you said, on point. I can see me do merchandise off of this. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to ask you. So, what inspired you to write this novel? Um kind of a little bit like what I said on the podcast, like I was that nerdy kid who grew up uh, watching and reading like sci-fi, post-apocalyptic stuff. Um, a big, uh, I guess, fandom that I loved was like the whole Mad Max series from like, all, all, there's actually four of them, people don't know that, but there's four of them. I loved all four of them. Um, and Tina Turner's character kind of stood out to me um, in Beyond Thunderdome because she was kind of running border town and just knowing that it wasn't a predominantly, um, I guess, white cast, you could say, that they did have this woman of color who was there running things and doing her thing, that just inspired me. And then, you know, later on in life, I fell in love with shows like The 100 and things like that. And I just felt like, you know, it'd be dope to have like a young girl of color 
um, mm-hmm. at the helm of this show. I mean, at the helm of the book, not the show. Maybe one day it will be show. But at the helm <laughs> of this, you know, book, kind of going through her coming of age process in that same setting. So, thank you for the question. Mm-hmm. Anything on your end, Ed? <laughs> um. Well, I'm I'm not the biggest reader, but you know, I I, I have a fair share of books that you know I I have read and. Uh, what is it? Post apocalypse. What is? Yeah. So there has been one other book that I read that was, you know, somewhat like this, and I never uh, thought I was into that. And so I read this other book, and then I read your book, and I'm like, man, it's kind of like opened up a whole new world to me. And the fact that the characters, you know, are black or whatever, and it's just, just kind of, you know, blew my mind. And you know, I try to. Um, I don't, I'm not one of those persons that reads a book or, or watches a movie and tries to figure it out, you know, within the first five or 10 minutes. I just like to just like have tunnel vision and, and, and flow and yeah. just the whole between Yoli, Daly, and Solomon. I was like, oh, what's going on here? This is, <laughs> this is gonna be some, I see some drama, some there. And how I imagined or what I was thinking it's not what happened at all. <laughs> it just kind of blew up. So. Okay, cool. Thank you. I appreciate all the feedback. Um, I think one of the overall themes that I hope I portrayed was the dynamic of like that struggle between being a teen and having to become a young adult with all these responsibilities that you don't really want but that are in play in your life and so that coming of age piece was what I really tried to capture in Yoli so um, what did you guys think of the characters overall I mean you could pick your favorite or talk about all of them or whatever like what do you guys think because I have my thoughts too Chevis about people's favorite people but that's fine go ahead I'll let you speak on that <laughs> well of course everybody I mean if well Anybody who knows me and has heard me talk about the book know I love Solomon. I'm team solo all day. So, you know, I just felt like, um, obviously, I just, uh, I, I kind of saw a lot of him in me or a lot of me in him, however you want to look at it. Um, but I just felt like, like he always got the short end of the stick, though. Like, you know, like, and I'm, I'm always trying to think too because obviously I read all three books. I'm like, I don't want to go into another book that's not whatever. So, but I'm like, man, like, like the stuff, I mean, just like you said, Ed, like you, you see something happen and you're thinking, okay, well, I know what's about to happen next. And then it don't happen or, or, or it kind of happens. And then all of a sudden your dreams get cr- uh, crushed all over again. I'm like, dang, why does it keep happening to Solomon? Like, this is my dude, you know? And, and then, you know, and that's just from more of the, uh, I guess, the love interest type, you know, you always think, you're always looking for a relationship in a book, you know, and then you're thinking you're going to get this relationship and it's like, wait, or it don't happen the way you want to, you know, and then that on top of just, you know, my man's had to grow a little backbone. I understand, you know, uh, Santana and them was kind of, you know, the, the villains and everything, but it just seemed like he was getting pumped way too much you know, at the beginning, and I'm just like, come on, bro, like, grow a backbone, like, stand up to these people, so, I don't know, yeah, but he's still, that, that's that's my guy, you know, I'm team solo all day, every day, and we go ride till the wheels fall off. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else before I get my uh, So, I don't know, I'll, I'll jump in, but um, I really liked Shirley, actually. I don't know, I found, I liked her character from the beginning, because you could tell, like, she brought up, sort of, like, um, mod, I don't know the word, but Modi cuddled, cuddled. So like, her, her, so her leader was Shepherd was the guy who, like, her, who's her. Okay, I won't go spoil anything, but her father in the beginning. So like, yeah. So he kind of like doesn't let her go outside the realms of the, the village of their their town or their village, and he doesn't let her like hang around with the locals. So I kind of felt sorry for her. I felt, I kind of I imagined her life being very secluded. And so when I saw like, so when opportunity for like a difference to happen, I was like, yes, this is an opportunity to like get out there, experience the world. And then obviously I'm going to spoil it, but then. <laughs> well, it, <honestly, laughs> anything in book one, talk about it. As long as we're not in the book two, if they haven't read it too bad, this is our book club. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I really got, and I was like, I, I drew towards Sela, her, fr- her friend, the, um, 
what's her, her what do you call her daily, daily. 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 That's it. yeah her daily so like yeah I was thinking I wanted to see the relationship develop between the two of them because I really love friendships in books so that was very interesting I even love the way you've done the language that they speak yeah they speak their own language I'm like how did you do that that's amazing it goes into like Lord of the Rings kind of like developing their own (laughs) way of that actually uh, that's the way me and my I have a younger sister and so when we didn't want our mom or like our aunties or whoever to know what was going on we would talk to each other like that so I literally wrote out like if I was having a conversation with my sister like just between them and it is just gibberish it's not like anything real but it was funny like we were able to understand each other, but nobody in the house could. So I thought that'd be like a little cute element to bring between uh, Selah and Yoli. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I do like Solomon as well. So I, I was like hoping for things to happen, but I'm like, I'm not going to spoil it. So but it's, <laughs> I do love that character. I do love his character. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. So for me, it was the daily and Selah okay. in the very beginning from, because to me, she was like, the, the badass, the protector, the friend. I don't, I don't know. Maybe that says a lot about me, but I just like that her, her, her role was. Uh, now we all know later. I'm not going to go into that, but just from the very beginning, she was kind of like my favorite. But you know, I, I like Yoli. You know, I kind of felt bad for her because she just wanted to be a child. And then Solomon. You know, I was, I was wondering what's up with him. You know, but yeah, from the beginning. For me, it was the daily okay. slash Sela. Okay, you're actually the first person who's ever said that. So that's pretty cool because everybody kind of leans towards like Solomon or um, Yoli. So it's mm. kind of interesting to hear that perspective. Um, she's very much a supporter to the overall story. She has her role, but um, I don't really, for me, I didn't think there was much character development for her purposely until you get to book two. So that you kind of see her transition. But um, I'm Team Stacia all day. I'm going to go to the grave with Team Stacia tatted on my back. I don't know. But, like, I loved her. Like, I, I felt like as much as Yoli was the center, there would – ooh, I can't say that. As much as Yoli <laughs> is the center of this story, uh, Stacia kind of put that buffer around her as she's doing A, B, C, D and kind of being that person to step into her life. So that was my character from A to Z. So any other questions or do you guys want to talk about any uh, points in the book that stood out? Um, I guess I'll... I'll, I'll right, oh, you go ahead. first. Right, yeah, you go first. No, we'll go in order, so don't worry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, I was just going to ask, uh, in terms of the the scenery or more specifically the delegations. Um, where did you get that from? And like, how did you come up with the actual settings for each delegation? Um, good question. Um, I think kind of like a, a running theme that I see in um, just, well, you know, the kind of stuff we watch. We watch uh, Walking Dead, We've seen the Hunger Games. We've seen the Hundred. And it seems like it's always one village against another. That's kind of like a running theme within the trope. Um, I think it was kind of easy, I guess, to kind of decipher. Because I already, like, going in, I knew the shore and the pit. These were going to be the horrible people against the good people. And I thought it'd be nice to kind of sprinkle in some of the other ones. So, like, Hilltop, I kind of saw them as more of, like, the Nordic barbarians, kind of the Viking-type guys uh the pit i just thought of mad max like y'all is nasty y'all out there doing your thing nobody fools with you guys uh who else was there the shore so those are kind of more like the we kind of got it together we have our civilization we're trying to do what's right and then the bottoms you don't know nothing about the bottoms so they're kind of like nomads they're never in one place for too long to kind of travel so um yeah, just how each of these different groups would kind of interact. I thought it'd be interesting to have that as like a backdrop to the main story of Yoli and how she has to deal with each of those factions and what they bring to her as a whole. So hope I answered your question. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to ask, like, how was the process of writing the book? Would it come to you like very easily or was it a struggle to get the book out? Or because it's like, 
yeah, I really love the, like, in the beginning, you go into so much detail about the, you know, the situation, about the apocalypse and how it almost killed everybody. And then, so I'm really, really interested in how you can to get to, the, get to your final book, yeah. Um, it's kind of like, you know, what you and I discussed yesterday in our, our own conversation of just, uh, it's more of like a timing thing for me. Like, if I can get the time to sit and write, I just write what I see in my head. I'm very, like, imaginative. I kind of, yeah, chef. I live in my head and I live in my emotions. I'm very sensitive. <laughs> That's just my world. And so I just kind of took what was going on in there and put it on paper, so to speak. So um, I just kind of saw it, if that makes sense. Like, uh, I can remember things from things I've read or watched and how could I make those same scenarios my own and write it in a way to where it would fit me. So I want to tell the story that I see, basically. So the biggest thing is just finding time to write, you know, with three kids and work and schedules. I'm one of those people I could like stay up all night till like three, four in the morning and like, hey, when Chev wakes up, hey, babe, I finished this. Look what I did. So <laughs> that kind of thing. So, yeah. I, um, so there's three books. Yes. And after the third book is like, is that going to be it? I, I want to say, yeah. I mean, I, I started writing um, a spinoff for one of the characters that you'll meet in book two. Um, uh, Sheer, we'll just spoil that, Sheer. So she'll have a spinoff if I choose to finish it. I'm working on some other stuff right now, but hopefully I'll come back to that. But I think, I think once you get to the end of the third book, you're kind of like, okay, hopefully the readers will feel satisfied, like they had adequate enough time with Yoli and her drama, so... We need a solo spinoff. No, we don't. Um, <laughs> we don't need a solo spinoff. <laughs> one thing, one thing I, I did like too is um just the way you wrote it. Like, not every single chapter, but pretty much every chapter is from a different perspective, and so it's not like mm -hmm. uh, you know if if me I was to try to write a book, you know I, I'm writing it like all these characters are in here, and I'm telling it like from a top down view and you're telling it more from a, a, a personal view, like the, the insider looking out, like this is my life, this is what I'm going through, this is what I'm thinking of when these things happen. And it gives a different perspective to it versus just like somebody narrating what all these people are doing, kind of like looking down at everybody just kind of narrating. So I really like the way you wrote that. Thank you. I have a hard time writing any other way. <laughs> I like, it's hard for me to do the bird's eye view kind of writing. Um, and then I want to get away uh, in the future from writing like that dual POV, that dual point of view type writing. I just feel like with the two uh, main characters, they're obviously going to have two different perspectives on the, the plot. And so how does that merge together? And so that's kind of what I, I did with uh, Yoli and Solomon. So thank you. So who was your favorite character to, to write then? <laughs> uh, for this book or this series? Because that's, Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, for this book. And, then, and then maybe you could say the series if you feel too. <laughs> um, see, there you see. <laughs> so I'll, I think for, uh, all right, Chef. For book one, I think I had the most fun writing Solomon. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and and it, it was hard because one, like I'm not like a young 20 year old dude, so I don't know the <laughs> lingo. And then having to come up with things that, okay, if they're in this post apocalyptic world, like they're not gonna have the same slang as us. So what is some of the things that their new culture have adapted to to make cool? But um, Solomon was fun because he was more of a cheeky type character as opposed to some more of the hard edge characters for this book. Um, and then for the series, um, my favorite, character of all time and the one I had the most fun writing was probably Magda and you get that introduction to her in the second book so yeah we'll get more into her in the next one hopefully so yeah I, I have a question I, now that you've you know finished all three three books and looking back to book one or going over um is there anything you would do different or write different you understand, kind of understand what I'm saying? If, if, if you were writing book one all over again, is there anything you would change or do anything different? 
Yeah, that's actually a good question. Um, one, the editing would be more precise to my liking. Um, that, but then as far as like the plot, um, some of the feedback that I've gotten was uh, there wasn't enough Sayla in the book. So maybe bringing more of her character to the forefront, giving her more of a role than just the role that we see her in. Um, and then, uh, won't name any names, but somebody had also told me that they were kind of disappointed in Shepard. Like he wasn't the, the, you know, heroic leader of the shore delegation and the father to Yoli that he could have been. He kind of cowered out. Um, I did that purposely, but some of the feedback was they did not like that. So maybe I would rethink some of Shepard too, I guess. Not that I want to, you know, please people, but you want to please people. You want to give a good story. So I think those are probably some of the other things. What do you guys think could have been adjusted or added? What would you have liked to see more? Mm -hmm. I'll back at y'all, so. I don't know. I think maybe the good idea or what you said, somebody wish they would have known a little bit more about Sila. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's a good point. Because, you know, I told you I liked her from the very beginning. Yeah. So, but I mean, yeah, I guess that's the only thing I would say. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I, I don't necessarily see a, a need to change anything, but if you did, maybe Sayla more. Um, I, I mean, thinking about like, you know, just think about the stuff that other people have said. Um, Shepard, not so much because you kind of, in order for the story to work, you know, and the drama to work, you kind of don't need to know a whole bunch about him. Otherwise, it just kind of ruins it all. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Sayla, like, like, yeah, like, where exactly do you come from? You, you brief, kind of briefly mentioned what happened to your parents. Like, how did that even transpire? Like, now you're here, like, how do you even feel about being in a situation you don't have your quote unquote family with you? And, you know, and then maybe that can help inform the readers on why she makes other decisions going down the line. I don't know. But. Okay. Oh, that's a good point. I like that. Uh, I agree with that. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything for the next book, but you wonder, you know, how did she get there? What, yeah. what? Because she just she does a transformation, and you're like, how did she get from place to that? Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> okay, I, well, I definitely see that. I mean, you know, I, I guess I can do some quick throw in editing for three, but I think, I think three is kind of like the the bow on the package. That's where everything kind of gets wrapped up together, and you begin to see like, oh, you know, when I read book one, this is kind of you know where that came from. So hopefully, those questions will be answered in the later. So, so kind of going along with that theme, of course, I kind of know the answer already, but other people might not know. How do we even get the three books? Like, like how, do we, how do we get here? Like, has this always been your vision to have three separate books? You know, like- Oh, okay, thank you for asking. I was like, what? Um, well, when I first wrote it, it was one bat book. And so I did like uh, some of the different pitch wars and things like that. And so I had some um, people give feedback when I submitted the book. Oh, it's too long. You need to have it under this word count or, oh, you should break it here and these kind of things. And so um, it kind of made sense after I went back. And then also from like a, you know, not that I'm doing this for money, I'm doing it because I'm passionate about it, but also from a money standpoint, it is more money. If you're taking this giant you know, Lord of the Rings, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien book and, you know, chopping it down, you know, you can extend it out into three different parts. So um, I guess that's kind of how the three books came about, you know, being one novel, chopping it into three parts and still hoping to have enough content to be interesting for people to ride along with the story. So there's that. Um, what I wanted to ask, <clears throat> excuse me, what were some specific scenes that stood out to you guys? Because um, I know what my favorite scene for book one is, but what are some of the scenes that stood out to you guys or that you liked, did not like, that kind of thing? Hmm. <laughs> 
Okay, I'll start off. I'll start off with a, a kind of an easier one. Okay. Um, it's more towards the beginning of the book. Uh, obviously, uh, Solomon is trying to get a hold of Yoli and all that stuff, and you know they're kind of like you know back up. He's continuously getting beat down by all the guards, and just like he keeps trying to grab her, like he doesn't understand this. Huh? At the beach. Yeah, at the beach. You know, like who doesn't understand that, hey, you can't just touch royalty like this, like, but he keeps grabbing her by the arm and the guards keep slamming him down and stuff. But eventually he gets back to Santana, you know, the one I hate the most in this whole book. Uh, actually, I, don't know, I, might hate, I might hate Jared more, I don't know. But anyway, you know, he, he's back at Santana and it's like Santana just punking him, like, like, like he work, like literally, like he works for him, which he technically doesn't. But he it's kind of like, yeah. But you know, it's kind of like, look, if you want to post trade in my neighborhood, you gonna have to do what I say. Like you know, kind of like you see the stories with the drug deals and like, you know, you in my neighborhood now, you gonna have to, you know. I'm sitting there like, dude, do something, and he just like, uh, I don't know. What do you mean? What do you mean? And Santana gets in his face like, punk. You know what I mean? Give me my answers. You know, and it's like. Dude, you gotta, I mean, especially when you find out, well, anyway, when you when you find out that Solomon is kind of feeling Yoli, like, you know, like, at least stick up for your girl, like, I don't know, lie, something, like, but he just kind of <laughs> just, it's just like, he, he just kind of backs down and acquiesces and just like, okay, Santana, whatever you want, you know, as long as I don't have to get beat up again, and then you got the big fat stinky man, or I can't remember what he was called, the big fat man, something. But he, uh, the he was really stinky. I can't remember. I think they called him the big fat man, something like that. But um, I should have opened up my notes. But uh, yeah, like it's just I wanted Solomon to really step up from the beginning and be a strong person. And now that I'm even thinking about it, it may not have played a whole lot of role into you know him and Yoli's dynamic going forward. But just like if he would have started off super strong, maybe it would have went a little bit different versus you know maybe she maybe she saw some of that weakness in him and you know whatever but I mean I, I well I mean being the one who wrote it it's like I also think Solomon went through his own transition too like he was raised a certain way he's grown a certain way he doesn't have that uh parental type influence on his life so he's kind of his own man he does his own thing so being that he was raised predominantly with the, the people at the bottoms, like, I don't know. Like, he has his own growth to go through as well. It's kind of how I looked at Solomon. I kind of looked at all of them, like, they're all works in progress. They're all, like, challenged in some way by life. And so they all have to kind of navigate it. Solomon just did not do well. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Oh, and that guy, his name was Fat Man the Gatekeeper. That the gatekeeper one. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 With the cigar, chewing on that cigar. Yeah, yeah, that one, yeah. Oh, leather skin. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, I think for me, it was, um, I'm trying to remember the situation, but when it came to a head, when, I don't want to give it away too much, but when Yoli, Sela, uh, I don't know if Solomon was there, I can't remember now, but when they, and Shepard is there, and then I think J Jared, Jared four, four. and yeah, four, and then um, oh, they yeah. all come to, you know, when it comes to that situation, yeah. when they all come to their head, and yeah. exactly, so that to me stood out really distinctively, so I was like, oh, okay, what's going to happen here, because it's like, that's where all the action was, like, really building up, so I was like, okay, I want to see what happens here, and it doesn't go, I don't want to spoil it, so, but it didn't go how I expected it to go, yeah. one of the reasons being because uh, the friendship between the two girls, like, because it, it kind of, it kind of like affects them there. So I won't say too much, but I don't want to spoil it, but yeah. <laughs> well, no, 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 spoilers away. They, they got to read it. So, I mean, um, this is kind of the platform to do that. But yeah, when they got back to the Citadel, it was kind of like, now we're all face to face. So we're either going to deal with all of our, our drama or we're going to fight. What are we going to do? And so each character is having to grapple with like, dang, what do we do? The enemy is here, good guys versus bad guys. Then you got the scion sitting here and the elect lady is here. So what do we do? And so that's just how it played out. And then of course, Yoli's decision, how she decides to deal with it, you know, she decides to run. So yeah, 
I, I, I mean, I thought about in that situation what I would do, and I'm like, fight or flight, in that situation, I probably would have ran too. <laughs> like, I wouldn't stay there and deal with all that. Like, y'all is tripping, I'm out. So, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. What about you, Ed? Any scenes? Um, this first scene that just kind of caught me, I just kind of want to piggyback off what Annabelle said, and it was just the shepherd, and I was, you know, like, man, this guy, he, he's a piece of work. And then when he just um, kind of like went off on Yoli and, you know, downgraded her and like maybe he took her Zion, her Zion away or, or yeah, the Zion. you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, just yeah. that whole, that whole situation, that, that, that scene there, that was, I was like, whoa, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. And it's like, then you find out like, dude, you're not even living up to like, who you're supposed to be and you're talking less about me so again putting that frame of mind in like a young-minded you know person's body I guess you know somebody who doesn't have the I guess maturity or leadership like he does and how contradicting and hypocritical that would be to see that in her father like you're going to talk to me crazy but then later on I find out a b c d about you so yeah I'd be pretty mad at Shepard um I think the hardest chapter that I think some people have grappled with is the kidnapping, that whole scene where the group has to enter into the pit to go get her back. Um, I've heard a lot of interesting feedback about that chapter. Um, but the part for me that I really liked writing, um, <laughs> weird to say, is once they're all in the, uh, the bunker, like kind of towards the end of the book, uh, it's Solomon Station Yoli, and Yoli's kind of coming down. She's detoxing. She's wrestling with her emotions. She's looking at Stacia differently. She's, uh, life has changed her. Her trauma has changed her. And so now she's kind of dealing with all that. That was, for me, like, it, it was emotional to write, and I hope I conveyed those emotions as best I could through Yoli's experience. So to me, I think outside of like the initial, oh, you know, in the pit, da, 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 the aftermath, um, just the scene with her jumping out of the truck and running into the desert at night, you know, trying to just escape because she's like super high, you know, like that kind of stuff. Like, you know, I think that's what hit me. You shaking your head, sir, what's going on? Just, uh, I, that's just <laughs> another situation where I'm like, Solomon, I need you to go in there. Guns are blazing. Like, bro, you see what they just did to your girl? Like, oh but, man, like was she was she his girl at that time? In his head, <laughs> in his head, like thinking, just like okay, okay so let, let, let's rewind just a little bit. Going back to when they got back to the bottoms, mm -hmm. we get introduced to Hollis. Yes. You know, Hollis is dope. I just want to say that Hollis is pretty dope. Um Hmm. So what is he supposed to, to think? Because remember, he's been pining for Stacia his whole life. So his so his loyalty isn't really to Yoli just yet. No, but like, he's he kind of like on the radar, but he ain't think about it, that girl. Trust me. She <laughs> didn't just get on the radar, you know. And this whole time, yes, he's been trying to get at Stacia, but it's been running into a brick wall. So I mean, as soon as as soon as he meets Yoli, he's thinking like, "Bruh, man, Yoli kind of right." Like you know, I'm like you know, Stacia ain't giving me no play. Like you know, and that's before figuring out any of the dynamics of anything. But it's just like, okay, so at this point, I mean, he, I, he's got it in his heart that yeah, like I'm feeling Yoli. So I don't understand how you go into that situation to see. I mean, again, that ain't his girl, but like you know, like no, you ain't gonna treat you ain't gonna treat Yoli like that. Like no. Nah. It's about to go down. And everybody, y'all ain't gonna back me up. Like, <laughs> like what? I was thinking like that was like other because I forgot if that was in the first book. I was, that was actually the most impactful see, scene that I read in the book. When you because the way you described it was so beautifully done. Just like the way you described it, her if it wasn't her. Like you made it like oh this is just a random girl, and you described what was happening to this random girl, and then you, then it clicks. Oh my god, that's Yoli because the way she was behaving was so out of character, like from what we've been taught in the beginning. So I was just like, that was a very good scene. And so it's like, and then grappling with the situation, I do agree. I would like to see Solomon have, I don't know, but they, everybody did, 
everybody did what they could, I think, I imagine, like, curves, like Ashia, Askia, Solomon, they all got in there, got her out, and, like, so, I, th- I don't know if there's more that could have been done, I don't know, so, yeah. That's what I'm saying, like, what else did he do? He, he carried the girl from the crevasse all the yeah. way to the bunker, he did his part. I mean, okay, so putting this in real life, real life situation, like, they carry me back to the bunker, to the crevasse? No, that, that's not what, that's not what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, like, this is this is this is on topic, but it's a little off topic. So, like when we talk about the dynamics in like me and your communication styles and stuff, like you would like me to be more emotional sometimes, right? Yeah. I think this is a proper uh, situation when Solomon, like this, ain't just okay. Let me get you out of here, babe, and get you to safety. This is like no, you go in there guns and blazing, then we'll get her to safety. But she go know that no, I went in there to war for you. Like not just oh, let me get you out of this bad situation. So it just was. I think he should have done more just to, you know. But I, again, I don't think he even realized who y- Yoli was to him at that point because of Stacia. And then when the when they're in the bunker and he finds the ring, the intent for the ring was not for Yoli, it was for Stacia. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, he's not tripping off her at that point. And Yoli was like, like all over the place. I mean, you, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> What was he supposed to do? How much running after and protecting? And because I mean, she was fighting. She was everybody was going left, and she was going right, right you know. And yeah. So I, what, what that Yoli was a piece of work, <laughs> 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 and Solomon to have those feelings towards her. I think that was probably still a little early, you know, for for Solomon to know because he's like, she was a wild child for real. <laughs> I, I agree. I definitely don't even think he was really thinking about her until he got that stamp of like final rejection from Stacia. And then once Stacia was like, you know, then he wasn't worried about it. What'd you guys think of the addition of the bounty hunters and Hollis? That like dueling too much or did it work? Because it works later. <laughs> to, yeah, so I'm trying to think um, of what was shared about um, in this. So for book one, uh, you meet Hollis when they get back uh, to the bottoms. Uh, Yoli's missing at this point. Um, and basically Solomon kind of watches the relationship between Stacia and Hollis from afar. So there's obviously, you know, history and chemistry there. And it's rubbing Solomon the wrong way. And <laughs> so now he's in his feelings like, on a 10, you know, so, you know, he feels a little, and it took the bounty hunters to go get Yoli, you know, with the assistance of Stacia, obviously, and Solomon, they really didn't do anything, but it was the bounty hunters who went and got Yoli back, so, you know. Yeah, I think, I think Solomon's I was... going to be able to do it, we know that. <laughs> 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 at that yeah. point, at that point, the story and Yoli needed the bounty hunters because Solomon wasn't going to be able to. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Hollis was, uh, he was an interesting character when he showed up. And I wasn't too sure. Like, I didn't like him. I did not like him. I just was like, oh, okay, this is, you know. And then, you know, start seeing the dynamic with him and Stacia a little bit. But then when the family interjects, I'm like, wait, What? This 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 doesn't like I kind of started not liking him then, you know, because it seemed it seemed to me at least that he wasn't being like up front, like, hey, like by the way, wait, you wait, know. Wait, what are you talking about? Are you, I think you're in book two. Okay, so that's what I was trying to say before. Okay, well never mind then. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. I think you're in book two right now. Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it was necessary to like because I was thinking, how are they gonna get her out of there? So I think it was like necessary to have another force come into the, so I can see why you, why you put them in there. That made a lot of sense because they needed a bit of like arm power. So I, yeah, I, I agree. I think when I first, this is going to be into Vic too, but like when I first met him, I was like, who is this person? Why is she behaving like this around him? Like she's been submissive to him and, you know, and then the Solomon who's been there all that time. I was like, no, nah, something's not right. <laughs> but then in book two, it unravels the situation. So it's like, okay, that makes sense. So I think it does play an important role in the book. Yeah. I think uh, 
book one is merely just a setup for books two and three. Um, I feel like this is all the backstory to what happens in this in the second and third book. Um, yeah, so that's kind of it. I mean, the cliffhanger, what did you guys think for the cliffhanger at the very end, just how it ended, like that final scene of like, now Yoli's better-ish. Uh, but you can tell her her mental is changed. She's no she's no longer sweet and timid. Now she's kind of a, a brat. She's you know a smart mouth now. And Solomon and how that got wrapped up, and then Stacia showing like, okay, we'll just do whatever the bounty hunters got going on. We'll just write with them. And then the book just kind of ends. Like, what kind of expectations did you think were going to come for book two? And you know what what it, what were your thoughts on how that one just kind of ended i mean again for me i just felt like i thought <clears throat> at least from the solomon and yoli standpoint that solomon was gonna kind of step up and kind of be that like white knight like you know the knight in shining armor and you know get everything back right and you know don't worry about the trauma i'm gonna help you through this and like you know, I thought it was gonna be all good. And then, you know, I just that was my thinking. Um, I will say after after reading, yeah, it had to be book two. So after reading book two and figuring out more dynamics of who actually everybody is, one thing that kind of I guess came into play for me was like the age differences between everybody. <laughs> <laughs> because initially I'm just assuming like okay all these people are similar ages kind of but then when it all hits the fan and like oh so that's who you are and that's who you are like wait well how old are these people like it just like you know like I could I could see Yoli obviously being like a teenager or whatever but then everybody else just kind of and I don't know why it had just dawned to me at that point like I didn't think about it at any time other time during the story until I found out actually who all these players were and how they all, you know, and I'm like, well, dang, well, y'all can't be the same age and y'all, so it just was, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of where I was at with it. Actually, that didn't even affect me until just now. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about, See? <laughs> because, yeah, that's interesting, yeah. Um, for me, I think at the end of the story, what I was most like was, I was thinking that they were gonna get revenge. Because, you know, after going through such a traumatic experience and her being so valuable to each of the people, like Ash Ash Asia for reasons which I won't talk about, but, and also to Solomon and to like other people around her. So yeah, I, and so it was, I was just expecting some sort of revenge plan or something to like get back at the people who had done this. Yeah. yeah, yeah they all just decided to run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they just ran away. <laughs> um, oh, real quick. Oh, go ahead, Ed. I'm sorry, Amina. Oh, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, another thing that I think we get glimpses of in book one, and then more so in the other books, uh, hopefully I did it well, but I felt my execution kind of wavered with uh, the map and what that meant and the old truth and what that actually was and why they wanted it, what, what Santana wanted with it and what he was going to do with it. I think it plays out later because you find out more about Santana and Jared and you know that kind of stuff so even that I think kind of like Annabelle what we were talking about yesterday Annabelle is extremely good at dropping nuggets for the future into like the you know uh beginning parts of the book and it sets you up in such a way to where you're like no 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 I remember she wrote this so I need to know what this means and so it's like I don't feel I did that as adequately with the whole old truth in the map, but like going forward, like in other books, like I really admire the way Annabelle like puts together her, her mystery of the plot and how it all oh, fits. And I think that's one thing that I hope I conveyed well, but I don't think you really know what like the map and the, all that stuff means until later in the books, you find out what it actually is and what's going on with it. So. Um, that's pretty much, <coughs> excuse me, it she, for, um, okay. thank you. That's pretty much it for book one. I hope you guys would like to dive into book two uh, with me at a later date. Um, that's actually, I don't know, it's a toss up between 
books two and three for me. Like I love book two because of some of the things that are revealed, but then at the same token, I think the ending to book three is amazing just because of the characters I, I'm endeared to. So uh, yeah, any final thoughts before we close up? I, I definitely want to do this again for book two. Because okay. I just I just finished it and like okay. book one book one was awesome but and yeah, but after finishing book one I was like oh man I gotta dive into book two and book two to me was amazing so yeah that's that's because I <clears throat> I'm trying to hold back and we're discussing <laughs> book one and you know I'm fresh in my mind is book two and so I'm, I don't want to say too much on you know right. part of book two for. I know you see me having to like wrinkle shed man and be like, oh. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, I appreciate your guys' this time. We'll definitely come back for book two and do it again. This was a nice little starter. Um, yeah, so I appreciate you guys. Thank you for reading the books. Um, and then for everybody else who watches the clip, I'll add where to find the books and all that good stuff. But thank you guys. Appreciate you very, very much. See you next time. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Bye. Yeah.